Fuck are you? Why are you? Why are you people in my house? Goddamn kids, get off my lawn. Um, <laughs> Kaiser. Oh, hey there, Squiddy. How was your stream? I'm. I've been awake for a whole less than an hour. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm an American old man. I got a shotgun. <coughs> oh, fuck me. Uh, my neighbor has a lawn, Marcus. It's part of, part of our deal. Um, Yeah. Right over there. He's got a lawn. Oh, fuck me. I'm tired. <laughs> I got like... Time is it? Fucking yeah! All right, so I got like maybe four, four and a half hours of sleep, something like that, ish. <sighs> Stream was good, but short. We did some channel planning, so I've been asked to do local polit political practice with article writing and video essays and stuff. It, I, I look tired because I am tired. <laughs> that's that's pretty much how that works. <laughs> Uh, I could, I could le legit just fucking like curl up for real. Oh, I don't even look. <sighs> um, I don't know what I want to say about Scott, honestly. Like, 
I think it is Karina. Um, Viva, I hope your I hope your mom. I hope your mom's okay. Right, like, I hope everything goes well. Mm, smooth sailing at the hospital tomorrow. Um. Wagonator, you still don't understand that there's there's just like rules, and there's like enforcement methods under anarchism. That like it's not just a free for all society where everybody gets to run around and fucking hit each other on the head with a baseball bat. You still don't grasp this, do you? Or do you just not want to grasp this? Is that is this just bad faith? Are you just you just operating in bad faith? I'm just gonna assume you're operating in bad faith. Um. Yeah. Okay. Co seeing as we've covered this before, we've covered this before. Don't make me pop your fucking history, man. It's anarchism. There we go. Literally covered uh, one, two, three, four, five. Fifth question you ever asked in here. Hey, hey, Cupcake. Oh, of course you did. First, uh, fifth question, uh, fifth, fifth fucking thing you ever typed in this chat. From day one. Don't, don't fucking play me. Yeah, I'm tired, so I'm not going to put up with your bad faith bullshit. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nah, all right, cupcake. <laughs> um, and I'm guessing I probably covered it. Oh, yep. Okay, so covered it in uh, September, covered it in October. Covered it twice in October. Looks like we probably covered it three times in October, two days back to back. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's of last year as well. Of going back, we're going back over a year now. We've had to explain anarchism to you. Oh, I just noticed the the year on those dates. Oh, this is this is this is all sorts of special then. To October of this year. What's up, dads? How you doing, man? Um, I mean, there, Karina, done. Uh, yeah, isn't it, Squiddy? That's that's a lot of fucking work to maintain some ignorance. Yeah. It, it takes it takes effort to be that fucking that ignorant of a topic. Be like, hey, I know you've answered this like five fucking times for me over the span of over a year, but hey, I don't I don't understand. How do you square having moderators as an anarchist? But anarchy is about no rules, right? It's it's complete and utter chaos, right? That's what anarchy is about, right? Fucking bad faith little prick. <laughs> anyway, dude, bunch of fucking, uh, maybe it's a memento thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Wagonator, show us, a, show us a photo of your, uh, of your arms and chest. Uh, do you have, do you have like tattoos everywhere? Um, Scorpio, thank you for the follow -up. Um, I don't think I could, uh, stay uninformed on something for a year after having it repeatedly explained. It just sounds like too much hard work. I know, right, Squid? Oh. 
I love that they, uh, I love that, uh, like, viewers don't, like, a lot of these fucking bad faith chuds, right? They don't understand that we can just pop their, like, entire history. <laughs> and just be like, um, let me just look at everything you've ever said. <laughs> like, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Dude, we got a bunch of fucked up shit that happened uh, happened in America. 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 <laughs> Caboose, we had another shooting. Oh, I mean, I wasn't even going to talk about the shooting, but yeah, we had another shooting. <laughs> Oh, uh, forgive, forgive, <laughs> forgive me, but I mean, what, what's, what's left? What's, what's left to do but laugh? I, you know, we're not, we're not changing this. We're not, we're not going to do anything about it. So <laughs> Cassidy, thanks for this. <laughs> thanks for the 11 months. Sub. No rules, no rules. Woo. Um, yeah, like, at this point, yeah, I I love that. Um, I love that announcement that happened at the beginning of the pandemic, like last year, like April, I think it was, about how that was the first April America had had without a school shooting in like forever, and <laughs> like all we had to do was close the schools. Hey, 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 rest of the world, rest of the world. America solved its school shooting issue. Oh, you got rid of the guns in schools? No, we got rid of the schools. <laughs> we figured it was easier. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the American solution right there, right? Uh... <laughs> fucking squid dude it's 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 crazy living in america squid it really is it's a fucking living hellscape nightmare land but it's it's also like kind of it's kind of fucking wacky it's like living in a movie or some shit it, it, it legitimately is at times fucking crazy as shit man <laughs> it's just oh god <coughs> <clears throat> Zippy, what's a different option? I know, right? Uh, dystopian, not man. It's just a Tuesday in the U.S. Um, <laughs> no one was in school. They did not get shot. We had a good year, everyone. Uh, <laughs> if there are no kids in a school, does it still make a gunfire sound? Oh, the American philosophy. Uh... <laughs> that's yeah that's fine dang this that's fine i haven't had somebody ask about rick in a long time actually it's kind of a blast from the past um we're just sort of warming up here but welcome um oh blink the contacts back into place <sighs> i you know yeah do we have a fucking i mean all right so there's a bunch of stuff that i can't um I can't show on stream, but we can talk about. Did anybody see the fucking uh, the cops who responded to the home invasion? And um, videos rough. Um, tell you what, everything I talk about, I'll I'll post as I talk about in shared content. Fucking cops. Uh, okay, so home invasion, home invasions in shared content, home invasion. And the dog chased away the fucking, uh, the, the would-be burglars, would-be assaulters, right? Home, home invasion. Standard policy. The, uh, the dog actually chased him away. The homeowner calls the cops and fucking, yep, diggeth. I saw the, comp, the cops stomp the dog. Oh, yeah. No, it's brutal. You think shooting the dog videos are rough? No, this is a rough video. The cop comes up and just starts kicking the shit out of the dog. I'm not kidding you. Like, unabashed rage. 
and everybody's comment, I'm not kidding you, so many comments were, you know what? His wife is probably happy. He's not coming home to beat her tonight. Oh, yeah, no. Fucking. It's. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Fucking Diggith is correct. The cop lied saying they were responding to a fucking dog biting people. Uh uh. Uh uh. They were responding to a reported home invasion. And that's the fucking dog that, that prevented the home invasion. And yeah, the, the cop literally runs up and starts, like, just fucking, like, leaning into the kicks. Just, oh, and you can hear the dog, by the way. Um, it's, it's, uh, Corpy, I can't show it on stream. If you're a member of the Discord server, by all means, it's in shared content. It, I just put it in there so, as we're talking about it. Um, no, no, Cupcake, the dog did not attack the, the, the cop. The cop literally runs up, like, sprinting and fucking just starts, like, leaning into the fucking dog. Like, oh, it's, it's rough. It's rough. It's like, oh. Um, one of my favorite comments, somebody asked, why though? And the person replied, it's been too long since he beat his wife, shot a dog, or exploited someone for the government's gain. Had to get it out of his system. Um... Yeah. No, it's 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 unabashed. Um oh. No, dogs dogs are considered property in America. They're not considered like sentient beings. Um so they are considered property at best it would be property damage so it'd be the equivalent of a cop walking up and smashing like you know maybe a window or something they're not going to get fired for it Um Yeah so Yeah exactly squid I mean what do you expect it's a fucking cop It's a fucking cop um, now I know everybody had to have seen the old dude in the scooter, right? Yeah. Viva tons of freedom, tons of freedom. That's what I'm told at least. Um, oh yeah. You're fuck crimson. If they roll up. Yep, this is true, Marcus. Um, oh, come on. You haven't seen the dude, old dude in the scooter? Oh, zippy. Um, it's, it's, it's bad. Um, here. All right. Uh, link in shared content going up. Uh, it's going to be an over 18 fucking warning. Um, uh, Corpy. Because cop. 40% more likely to be the victim of domestic abuse, domestic violence, if you're a partner of a cop. Right? Like, because cop. They, they kill, on average, 25 dogs a day in America. Okay? A day. Cop. They're narcissistic, sociopathic, psychopathic, maladjusted bullies who have the full power and weight of an abusive, coercive state behind them. Because, cop. We do live in a, I do live in a strange country. I don't disagree with that in the, in the slightest. This place is batshit insane. It's batshit insane. Um, yeah. It's like I like I said. It's 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 you know a hellscape wasteland type situation, but we're adjusted to it to a certain degree. <sighs> it is true. See, that is fair, Squiddy. That is fair. Uh, I don't know, Cal. Um, no, a scooter. Like yeah, like um, 
Uh, like, okay, so apparently this 61, 61 year old shoplifter in a mobility scooter had a pocket knife or some shit, right? Okay, so you know the full speed of like a fucking mobility scooter, right? 61 years old in a mobility scooter, disabled, shoplifting from a big box store. Cop rolls up three quarters of a second, no hesitation. Eight rounds dumped, pauses, and then dumps a nine, ninth round in the dude's back. Wasn't even facing him. Literally rolls up and fuck it. Tat 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 tat. Oh, wait. Tat 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 tat. <laughs> he has been fired, but not yet charged. There's too many overlapping jurisdictions right now, so nobody's 100 percent sure who's gonna fucking file charges. If somebody's gonna file charges, but he has been fired. <laughs> yeah yeah cops roll up on a fucking 61 year old shoplifter who by by all accounts may have, like had a pocket knife on him um oh geez yeah see that's the thing cassie's like that one time right um so yeah nine times nine fucking times just Basically mag dumped. I'd say the mag dump, but he didn't. That's the fucking hilarity of the video. He dumps eight rounds into the dude's back, pauses, and then dumps a ninth one into him. It's like, what the fuck, man? The eight weren't good enough. Oh, by the way, um, handcuffs him on the ground. Dude falls out of the wheelchair. Fucking, I mean, just dead, right? Like, dude just falls the fuck out of the wheelchair. And the cop comes running up and handcuffs him. <laughs> and it's like, I'm pretty sure that's not. You don't even got to worry about that anymore, homie. <laughs> oh, can we get a cop harming the helpless as a bingo square? You know what? Yeah. Yeah, that's something that happens so fucking often. We do probably need a square for it. Um, Cop doing a cop uh, a cop uh wait wait a cop cop being a cop there we go cop being a cop that way we can cover more than just shooting some like you know helpless person so new square deployed you'd have to re-roll your uh, bingo cards though if you want to potentially see it um uh corpy um, here's, here's, um, <laughs> um, it, it, fun, fun fact. Cops don't have dangerous jobs. They, they actually don't have dangerous jobs. I've done an article on this one before and I've crunched the numbers on a national scale. Um, cops are, where's my number? Um, 0.0058%. Okay. 0.0058%. Yes, I've adjusted my my uh, decimal place correctly on this one. It's not 0.58%. It's 0.0058% of police officers were violently killed in the year 2019. All right, 2.0058. Um, of the jobs that are more dangerous than cops, everyone, everyone has a more dangerous job than a cop in America. Like legit. Um, pavers, truck drivers, roofers, maintenance workers, woodworkers, septic, septic tank servicers, <coughs> uh, refuse collectors, farmers, ranchers, rail track layers, like rebar workers, riggers, uh, first line supervisors for farming or fishing or forestry, like name it, fucking name it. Um, pizza delivery drivers, like take out pizza delivery drivers, more danger, way more dangerous job than cops way more dangerous cabbies fucking like uber drivers way more dangerous job than cops like cops shouldn't have guns they shouldn't have guns so yeah like i'm with you for the first part like it yeah it, it is they just shouldn't have them which by the way is the official channel policy 
we've somebody asked about guns in America. Um, uh, Corpo, all of those numbers here, feel free to read. These aren't, these aren't gross numbers. These are per capita. Yeah. It's all adjusted for injury per a hundred thousand. Like I said, I've done these numbers and I use the most generous numbers possible. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund is who I used numbers for officer fatalities for, right? Advisor Smith was the insurance analyst group whose uh, workplace uh, safety and fatality numbers I used for the rest of them. Yeah, no, these are, this is solid math. Cops don't have a dangerous job. They don't. Um, hey, Astral. <clears throat> RMPT and Uber drivers? I mean, they should be armed already. If they have corporate policy that says they're not allowed to be armed, I wouldn't work there. I mean, I wouldn't work there in the first place. But, um, yeah. I'd be like, no, I'm not. You can fuck off. Hey, Eloy. <clears throat> Probably Caboose. No, legitimately, probably. I'd, I'd have to pull the labor statistics on on that sort of thing, but there's a high probability. Yeah. Yeah, cops are car, cops are insanely more dangerous to us than they than we are to them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done this before, but Corpy, if you want to hear the the rundown, I can do you, I can do the rundown for you, right? The, these numbers change now because cops actually have a higher mortality rate than in, in 2019. 2020 and 2021 kicked off a, a mortality spike for cops, but not because of the public, because cops refuse to get vaccinated and wear masks. So COVID is now the number one killer of cops in America. Fucking COVID did what NWA couldn't, <laughs> right? Like, straight up. Um, yeah. <laughs> Comrade COVID. <laughs> um, but I mean, here's 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 the 2019 statistics, and like I said, this is from the National Law Enforcement uh, Law Enforcement uh, Officers Memorial Fund, right? Like, if anybody was going to be generous with their numbers. So I, I chose the most generous group to work off of their numbers. Um, so as of the end, December 27th of 2019, 128 federal, state, and local police officers died in the line of duty. All right. But hold on there, Sparky. We're not done. 43 of those 128 were traffic-related fatalities where the officer was outside their patrol vehicle and struck by another vehicle accidentally while engaging in activity on the roadside. Not intentional homicide, just vehicular accidents comes with the job. So after some basic arithmetic, it, that leaves us with 85 officer fatalities in, in 2019. But wait, wait, there's more. Now we need to subtract the 19 officers who died from job-related illnesses, leaving 66 officer fatalities in 2019. Oh, but if you thought we were done, think again. Take those remaining 66 and subtract the 12 that died from 9-11 attack-related illnesses, and you end up with 54 officers. But don't forget the one officer who died, uh, to, uh, died to fire while on duty. Okay. And the one who died while on vacation in Hawaii, who they tried to count anyway. Now you're down to 52 officer fatalities in the year of 2019. 52. Now you can finally start to talk about violence and aggression-based fatalities police face while on duty. That would work out to be 49 from firearm-related deaths, 2 from beatings, and 1 from strangulation. 52 deaths. Now, let's use a very loose total presence in America provided by the uh, police presence in America provided by the same group of, quote, over 900,000 and just round it down to an even 900,000. That is federal, state, local police. That is the police population in its entirety. That works out to roughly 0.0058% of the of the at time current police officers being violently killed 
And you know who has a more dangerous job? Everyone. Everyone has a more dangerous job than that. And I have a, a, a table on that article of people who have more dangerous jobs than cops. It's just the way it works. Yeah, Corpo. Corpy, that's because COVID's killing them. Their numbers, as I pointed out, their numbers spiked in 2020 and 2021 because COVID is now the number one killer of cops in America because they refuse to get vaccinated and they refuse to wear masks. And as far as I'm concerned, well... That's not on me. So, yeah. Cops should not have guns. Everyone else should. Done. Um, all right. So, you know they're probably going to reverse Roe v. Wade, right? Like, plan on that like that's that's plan on that if you be rocking a uterus in America right about now get your abortions while they're hot girls cause it looks like we might be having a going out of uh, going out of business sale here soon um Yes, Crimson. Yeah, they, they literally do that. Stock it up on plan B. Yes, sirree. Um, yeah. That shit, that shit seems to be coming down the pike. So. Um. Oh. <sighs> And 23 to 28 of them, Peaky, are likely going to be states that will flip it. So, yeah. And and we, yeah, Bidouin. <laughs> hey, Bidouin. Um, and we, uh, we already know, like, from previous iterations of U.S., uh, like, uh, illegal abortion periods um the rich power the rich famous and powerful um have always gotten abortions that's been a that's been a known thing for ages that it, it's 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 the people of color it's the poor people it's all of you fucking riffraff that aren't allowed to have abortions when the senator's daughter gets pregnant oh she goes on vacation and comes back a couple of uh, a couple ounces lighter, <laughs> right? Like it's like that. Um. So. Yeah. I. <clears throat> There's. They think you're brood mares for the state. That's how they see you. They see you as brood mares for the state. I, that's it. I got nothing more than that, really. Like, it's not really my topic. It's really not my issue. As far as I'm concerned, this is like a, you know, it, it's, you, this is a sort of a, like a personal property issue. Like, do you own your body or not? No? Well, then I guess they can get, tell you what the fuck you get to do with it then. I personally would be of the opinion that you probably do and that somebody telling you that you have to, by the way, Amy Comey Barrett, can we just talk about how fucking just evil this cunt is? Like I saw the list. I saw the list of shit she's fine with. 
by the way. Like, it, it, it fucking, somebody put it together. Ectopic pregnancy, gestational diabetes, cervical insufficiency, placental abruption, placental previa, amniotic fluid complications, and preeclampsia. Um, she hand waved all of those. Like, just God's will. God's will. Like, I, I just. <sighs> Can we not put cult members in positions of power? She's a cult member. You know that, right? Like, she's a legitimate cult member. Amy Con Coney Barrett is a fucking cult member. Right? Like, they put some distance between her and her fucking cult. But she's a cult member. Like, straight up, like, potentially the inspiration from Handmaid's Tale. Uh, Handmaid's Tale. Uh, Handmaid's Tale. Um, yeah. Like, her cult is kind of notorious. Like, they're a bunch of psychopaths. This bitch is a fucking Supreme Court justice. Like, I'm sorry. Can we not? Yeah, it's only for men, Bidouin. Uh, I'll look up. I'll look up her fucking cult. Um. People of praise. That's not ominous, right? People of praise, a quasi-Catholic far-right cult. It's a cult. It's a cult. Um. Yeah. People of praise does not practice traditional Catholicism, but rather greatly influenced by far-right fundamentalists and Pentecostal evangelists. Um, it, here you'll you'll all you'll all enjoy this one. Um, people of praise is a severely patriarchal belief system in which people of praise members refer to female members as anybody want to guess anybody want to guess anybody want to guess handmaids squiddy was there with it yep uh-huh like this seriously seriously these people, it's a fucking cult. It's a fucking cult straight out like the Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale. Like, this shit is for real. She's in a fucking cult. Or she was. They put distance between the cult and her. Right? Um, former members, um, one who uh, went on the record who joined the group in 1979, now 65, told the AP when she was a member... Quote, women were expected to live in total submission to their husbands. Uh, my husband at the time was very drawn to it because of the structure of the submission of women. Um, every consequential personal decision, whether to take a new job, buy a particular model of car, or choose where to live, went through the hierarchy of male leadership. Memberships, uh, members of the group who worked outside the community had to turn over their pay stubs to church leaders to confirm they were tithing correctly. Her husband accompanied her to gynecological appointments to make sure she was not obtaining birth control in secret. Um, a married woman is expected to always reflect the fact that she is under her husband's authority. This goes beyond the, an, an acknowledgement the husband, that the husband is head of household or head of the family. He is, in fact, her personal pastoral head. Whatever she does requires his approval. He is responsible for her formation and growth in the Christian life. Um, oh, oh, um... If you're wondering what their position on um, marital rape is, um, I remember my mother saying a wife could never deny sex to her husband because it was her right, it, because it was his right and her duty. Sex is not for pleasure; it's for as many babies as God chooses to give you. Women had to be obe obedient; they had to be subservient. Oh, no.
Oh, Jesus. Um. Oh, yeah, no. No, uh, text. We really uh, just mentioned that. Um. Uh, what do we got? Just to share, when she was nominated, I asked my two most academically minded professors about her since she's mostly an academic. Oh, uh, which response was worse? Quote, she's never written a creative article in her life and it's all Federalist Society incest and friends citing friends. And the other, my now boss, told me it's not a grift. She's a true believer and more conservative than anyone seems to realize. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with your second. I'm with your boss, fucking Marcus. And thank you for the biddies, Marcus. I mean, look. This shit makes me want to overdose on Sterner. Yeah. They're like, give me the fucking pipe. We're free base and Sterner today, boys. Um. I. Like, I got nothing good to say. Right, like this is one of those situations where I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to like cite TOS and move on because let's face it, right? Like this 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 is this is a horrible human being we're talking about here. I I like fuck her. How do we take down institutions like the Federalist Society asking for a friend? <clears throat> Amy Coney Barrett. Coney Barrett. Um, fucking nonsense. Fertus. Very few. Very few. You know what it's easier to do, Fertus? It's easier to expand the court than remove someone. Okay, that's cow poker. There's your warning. That's the line. I pulled it, but yeah. Um, Um, yeah, like it's legitimately easier to add seats to the court than it is to remove somebody. There's apparently a process. There is an impeachment process. It's not a guarantee. But it'd be easier to add three seats. Oh, Peaky. It was. But the Republicans rammed her through anyway. Yeah, guys. Okay. Guys. Guys. No calls to violence. How? Why do I have to... You can't, you can't say in Minecraft or in Roblox or you can't, there's no way around this, right? Like, I feel what you're feeling, but like, no calls to violence. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, it, did New Mexico do that? Good on New Mexico. Let me check Nevada. We've got, oh God, we've got a 24 week um, limit on ours. So uh, legal within 24 weeks since fertilization under NRS. And after 20 weeks, 24 weeks, if it could be fatal to the pregnant woman. So. Um, and by the way, I read that verbatim. 
Don't at me, leftists. Um, same in Oregon. Interesting. Jesus Christ, did they beast? Um, yeah, what was, um, oh God, fucking, it was, um, Samuel Chase, Marcus? I think it was Samuel Chase. Um, Yeah, that feels right. Uh, yep, well remembered. <laughs> fucking, it was, uh, dude. I don't even know why I know that. Know that. I don't know what fucking got him impeached. All my fucking dude. It's just I'm hazy right now. I'm tired. I'm hazy. Um, but it was in there. <laughs> fucking, I, I'm not sure if I can name all of our justices right now, but I do. Chase. Oh my god. Um, yeah, we got a bunch in Nevada, so just come here. Like, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> y'all just, just, just fucking have a Vegas vacation. Fucking, if you find out you're pregnant, don't say shit to, sh to anybody. Just come to Vegas. We'll, we'll take care of you. Like, Vegas will hook you up. Like, we got... We, dude, we got, we got drive through wedding chapels. We got online divorces. We got fucking houses of ill repute. We've got fucking all you can eat. Like just, just come to Vegas, right? We will hook you up. I'm certain like that will be a thing in Vegas. We'll have abortion clinics. Yeah. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Even your fetus. Um, <laughs> joking, but for real. Yeah. Like I'm. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and abortion. Come to Vegas for all the delights. You didn't mention slot machines. Well, I don't mention the slot machines because those would make all uh, make us all our money. <laughs> like uh, Cassidy, B Bobby, fucking. How much of the percentage is it? Like eighty percent of floor revenue comes from the machines. I always forget that number. But vast majority of the uh, the revenue for a uh, casino floor comes from the slots. So, um, either way, yeah, yeah. Just come eighty five percent. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's a big thing. Slot machines make the majority of the money. Um, oh, we have deals with everybody, uh, Corpy. Like, you can get to Vegas for cheap. You can get to Vegas for cheap. You can get to Vegas for cheap from, from Paris. I'm not kidding you. We set up an airline. Um, there's a, there's a specific airline that does uh, the haul from Paris to, uh, to Vegas back and forth. You can get cheap flights from like Paris to Vegas. I looked it up one day for, for two or so, uh, somebody, I think. Um, yeah, it is insanely cheap to get to Vegas. Yeah. It's really easy to get here. We'll take all your money once you're here, but fucking, we'll get you here for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Nova came back with a fresh, clear mind. What's some positive news? Oh, Nova. <laughs> uh, I've done a round trip to Vegas for a buck twenty-five. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, just, just make sure you get a round trip ticket. Don't get stuck. Yeah, a lot of the college bro, scene, uh, bro idiots, they do one ways and they get fucking stuck here. Um. Um, what's a good, oh, here you go. <laughs> I'm so evil. I'm so fucking evil. Uh, Nova, um, in direct rep, uh, reply to, okay, I'm back with a fresh, clear mind. What's some positive news? Here's some positive news. Um, one of the most, um, uh, um, uncontacted tribes in, um, uh, in, uh, Brazil, they, they are one of the most like pressured but uncontacted tribes in uh in brazil their land is being invaded and destroyed for beef production right now as we speak um yeah um they're being murdered uh and driven from their land by um by yeah um 
beef farmers in Brazil. So that's what you're looking for, right? I'm I'm a, I'm a horrible person when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> squid, I hate this planet. Um, the one good news I can say about that is if you're an American, congratulations, you're not actually responsible for this one. Um, um, we don't buy Brazilian beef products. That's, we don't import from Brazil. So... America can actually sort of just sit this one out. We're we're not responsible for this one. Um, the Brazilian beef goes abroad. It goes across South America. It goes uh, to Europe. It goes to Asia. But we don't consume Brazilian beef in America. So for once, for once, Americans take a lap on this one. We're fucking not actually guilty. We're not contributing to this one. Um, and Portuguese don't have a huge influence in North America to start with. So it's not like our colonizer ancestors were responsible for it either. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're clean on this one. America. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations, America. Americans. This one's not on you. This one's not on us. So that's the one thing I could say about this story is this. I mean, we could have stepped in and put political, geopolitical pressure on Brazil and forced them to stop doing things like this. Um, and we didn't do that. Um, so, of course, you know, we're guilty in the same way that fence riding centrists are always guilty when genocide is happening before their very eyes and they say nothing about it. But we're not the primary source of this one. This world is fucked. Uh. Uh. Yes, yes. This time we're not in. We're just enabling, not actively participating. Baby steps, everyone. Baby steps. Um. So. Woo! <laughs> Americans enjoy your one victory lap. Um, there is possibility SpaceX is going bankrupt, but again, that doesn't mean the end of SpaceX. So, um, bye, Squiddy. Thanks for the raid. Enjoy your lay down. <laughs> hey, commune. It just means more tax money for bailouts. Basically, that's it, it, that's what I'm hearing is when s people start saying that like, hey, did you hear SpaceX may be bankrupt? All I'm hearing is somebody's dodging a bill. Somebody owes money and somebody wants to not pay for owing that money. That's all. Toodles. Um... That's that's usually what that's about is corporate restructuring, corporate restructuring. <sighs> yeah, yeah, resolution. That's 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 why I, I it always uh, uh, I always adore when people are like, well, I don't want to declare bankruptcy. Why not? Just do it. It's fucking useful as shit. Fucking declare you should be declaring bankruptcy every seven years. <laughs> falls off your your falls off your credit score every seven years. Just fucking every seven years. Just wipe that shit clean. Restructure all your debt. Um also, by the way, here's 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 some like high tier white people shit. Um You should all form LLCs. You should all have trusts and LLCs formed when you're like 18. Right? Here's here's the thing. Like you should you should all have corporations and trusts. And everything should be you should own nothing. You should own absolutely nothing. Nothing should ever be in your personal name. And it doesn't cost as much as you'd think to set these sorts of like legal constructs up. Um, 
because this is how you dodge all of your financial responsibility, right? It's these sort of legal and economic mechanisms that allow you to dodge your your responsibility, right? Hey, Justin, thanks for the raid. What'd you guys get up to? Um, trust is in a trust fund. Yes. Uh, well, yes. Trust funds, there are various types of trusts um, with her, but yes, you should you should have both a trust and an LLC set up. Um, Marcus, who is an attorney, LLCs are cheap as balls and a trust could set you back five digits, but it's so beneficial if you can afford it. It is. You can, you can, you should never be personal, personally liable for anything. <laughs> hey, Monsieur. Um, a charitable remainder trust? Hey, now. Uh, somebody remembers Swede's advice. Um, how does it work in America claiming bankruptcy? If I do it in my country, I can be head of a company or shareholder or a member. Uh, I can't be uh, head of a... Oh, yeah, no, no, Corpy. That's fucking not at all how it works here. <laughs> Our rich people declare bankruptcy like fucking clockwork on a regular basis. It's fucking... Yeah, no, that's not how it works at all here. Oh... <laughs> uh, So, yeah, like, you should all not have any assets in your names. That way, if there is a, um, uh, Rev, you probably could. You're not rich, Glazy. I mean, you might be, like, upper middle class. You're not rich. I don't even think you're upper middle class. You're probably solidly middle class, but you know, do you make more than $140,000 a year? Uh, Glazy. Cause you don't even get to like upper middle class. If you don't make more than 140 K you're just probably solidly middle class. Then you're not rich. <laughs> you're not even, you're not even close to rich, man. Um, <laughs> wither, not if you don't have assets. This is why I was saying that you should have an LLC and a trust. If you don't have assets, there's nothing they can take from you. Hey, Lotta. Um, it depends. If you're in a European nation, um, if you're in North America or a European nation or maybe even Australia, yeah, this, this advice carries. I can't speak to Asia. I can't speak to uh, South America, but I can speak to the sort of Eurocentric countries. Yeah, most of this carries. I grew up in upper middle class. I thought I was comfy until I d dated a Carnegie for a bit. There's a d massive difference. Yeah, I lived uh, I lived down the streets, uh, down the street from um, one of the major Carnegie um, family members. I forget which one in Tennessee. Actually, they had. Uh, I remember their their um, dining room table seated something like 65, 64 people, something like that. Yeah, they they lived down the street from me actually. <laughs> Um, they were good for trick or treating. Um, let's see. It's funny you dated one. Uh, resolution. Um, Yes. <laughs> Long story short, yes. Um, they did have full-size candy bars. My my entire neighborhood actually had full-size candy bars. Um, yep, that fits. My girlfriend's dining room table was the war table of Tsar Nicholas II. Because why not? Yeah. 
Yeah, it is an entirely different. It's an entirely different existence. Um, not gonna lie, I wish I had it. It's a good. It's look as long as you're not a psychopath, you could do a lot of good with it. Um. Oh, Montauk. Yes. Yes. I've been out there. I've been to, well, I've been, I've stayed with, I've stayed in the Cape. Um, I've been to Martha's Vineyard. Um, been, I used to vacation in like every Thanksgiving, my family would go to Vail. So if you're familiar, okay, here's, here's the true test of money, right? Here's, here's, here's where it, this is, this separates the wheat from the chaff. Do you know the difference between Aspen and Vail? Because if you know the difference between Aspen and Vale, then congratulations, you've hung around with some fucking stupid rich people. Um, nice. <laughs> Sorenzo, yeah. Sorenzo Yamas. Uh, I don't know what either of them are, says Cal. Well... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we used to we used to vacation every Thanksgiving in Vail. Um, both in Colorado. Hey, Peaky with at least the basic geography. Good on you, Peaky. Um yeah, uh, V A L E. Um Cassidy me. <laughs> Cassidy, you've been around some fucking hardcore money. Of course you know the difference. And you know vacation spots because of fucking Bobby. Um So It, does it count if I only know about them because of law school? Black people know like snow. <laughs> uh, Marcus, I I wouldn't be surprised. How many how many of your like uh, ne'er do well upper upper crust classmates would say shit like they were you know, oh we're visiting the family in Vail this this uh, this winter. Um, so Aspen is where okay Aspen is kind of notorious right Aspen is where like all the rich people go Aspen is where the nouveau riche go. Aspen is like, um, I'm a Hollywood star and I bought a $25 million estate in Aspen, right? That's, that's where the nouveau riche go. Vale is old. Yes. Cassidy Vale is old money. Vale is where the like, yeah, we don't have a, a, a 97 acre estate here. We have a nice little, uh, like a nice little apartment or a little townhouse in in the center of Vale. Yes, where my family has been coming for generations. And we vacation at Gustav Gronsheimer's, which is right across the street from the furrier that ha it has imported Quebecois furs. And we just right up the slope. Vale is where the old money goes. And so you can't buy, like, it's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to buy a fucking apartment in Vail. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're just not. It's ridiculous. Um, Aspen is where they went in Dumb and Dumber. Um, Aspen's also where they hold uh, the Sundance Festival. Am I correct in that? Um, most of the people in my fencing academy, there we go. Uh, took up vacations to either Vail or the Alps, and some of the people in my school do too. Yes. Uh, I prefer Park City, who needs all these rich folks. I Peaky, look, like I said, used to vacation there with the family. It wasn't like I was choosing the spot. Um, but... Yeah. Um... I'd prefer, like, dude, I'd just prefer to be at, like, my home uh, home slopes. If I were going to pick some place to ski, I'd rather just be on Mount Snow in in Vermont. I, I, I'd i rather be on uh, be, be at Mount Snow. I, I, you know, it's not the greatest slopes in the world. It's not the best, but it's my home slopes. I'd rather be there. Um... I used to be peaky. I haven't been on a pair of skis in a lot of years. 
a lot of years, but I grew up on skis. Um, I, I, I mean, I was born in Vermont. We're, we're born with skis attached to our fucking feet. Um, I can tell you I was skiing double black diamond by the time I uh, moved to Tennessee. So 13. Um, yeah. So I used to be good, but that was many injuries ago and many years ago. So I would have a lot of learning to do in the meantime. Um, I don't trust skis, y'all crazy. What, what they they just do what you tell them to do. <laughs> Cassie, I don't ski. My mom doesn't ski either. My mom can't swim. I'm not kidding. It's the weirdest shit to me. I every time I think about this, like my mom, my mom can't swim. Like she, okay, she can doggy paddle to the point where she doesn't drown. Right. But it's, it's super shaky and shit like that. Right. Like it's weird as fuck to me. I grew up with like ponds and lakes and a pool and a boat and like, you know, it's like, how did you never learn? No, I, I, you know, yeah. What is just something intrinsic in me at this point? Cause they had, they learned, they, they had me learn real quickly. Right. Like I was one of those fucking babies that they tossed into the water basically because I was surrounding like our property in Vermont. Like I said, we had ponds and lakes and a pool, right? Like there was and a boat that we took out on, on lakes. Um, and so like, it was important for me as a baby to know how to swim. And so like, it's just intrinsic for me. And it's like, you don't know. That's right. I always, you know, it's like, I have these moments sometimes like, that's right. You don't know how to swim. Fucking weird. As a flatlander, as you are, not skiing seems normal, but not swim. How? Water is everywhere. I know, right? My wife can't swim and she grew up on an island. Oof, that's terrifying. Um, when is it safe to yeet a baby into water? Like, apparently immediately with her. Um, literally, my parents brought uh, bought a house with a pool so we just wouldn't be the black people who couldn't swim. <laughs> nice, Marcus. Um, <coughs> yeah. Um, wait, um, oh, Zippy, yeah, yeah, it is sort of a bougie fucking pastime, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want french fries, I just want pizza, and then I have a bad time. <laughs> Dude, french fries all day long. French fries all day long. Fucking bomb that hill. Um, and for those of you who don't know what the fuck Distant Red and I are on about, congratulations, you're apparently not a skier. Um, I'm from Florida. We didn't have snow or mountains. You couldn't convince me to ride down a slippery mountain. Can I strap a rope to your waist and drag you behind a, a boat at speed on the water, though? I've always lived at least an hour from water, uh, whether it was a lake, spring, river, or pool, so I've always swam. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> uh... I cried the first time I s tried skiing, so I never had to do it again. Oh, caboose. Yes, Fertus, it is. Pizza, pizza, french fries, pizza, french fries, pizza, french fries, pizza, french fries. Yes, it's 100%. It's how we teach, it's how we teach Americans to ski. <laughs> and of course, it's fucking junk food references. <laughs> Uh, I did that as a kid. It was a four-wheeler and car hood. They dragged us on a chain while I'm flying three times in the snow. Landed face down. Oof. Um, has war flashbacks about skiing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> just know how to yeet the baby in the water. You have to make sure they learn to swim before they go under. At least that's what I heard. <clears throat> it's the only thing I remember from the ski lessons was the pizza. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't get that kind of lesson. Like I got, dude, I got, we live in ski country fucking ski lessons my cousin um has skied all over the globe um he's he's kind of infamous in certain circles um he he was sort of renowned for like doing stupid shit um his first suspension from the mountain in vermont was um for jumping off the lift the the lift paused and he just he did what he does and he fucking like threw the bar up, like literally sort of like slid out and grabbed the bottom of the, the, um, the, uh, chair did a little rocking motion and fucking flung himself from the chair. Um, and he got caught and they gave him a two week suspension. Um, but he used to like, if he'd come to a, like a trail closed sign, he just fucking huck his skis over the, the fence and, climb the fence he he's jumped cliffs he's skied avalanche t uh, avalanche prone areas he's like he's yeah like that's just that's just who he always was um so yeah he went around the globe skiing stupid things and sort of making a little bit of a name for himself doing that um that's just that's just how he always rolled um the one thing I can say, and he was gorgeous too, was. He was gorgeous. This is my one saving grace. I always hated this particular cousin. He was gorgeous. He was a catch, right? Like he was extreme sports athletics. He was absolutely like across the board. He was just a fucking catch and a winner, right? Um, he's now shorter than me. He's balding. His eyesight is shot. He's got two fucking kids, which, by the way, the kids are adorable, and his wife is absolutely gorgeous and speaks, like, 97 fucking languages and is French and is, like, she's, you know, he fucking, he pinned down a good one. Um, but, yeah, like, all the stuff that used to, he used to leverage, gone. Uh, his knees are shot. His fucking foot is shot. His fucking, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Winning in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> peaked early. Yeah, it peaked early. I remember going over to their house one weekend. And this is when he was like 15, 16. Um, and I was like, where's, where's my cousin? Oh, he's out on a date. Uh-huh. I went back the next day. Where's my cousin? He's still out on the date. Right? He was in high school doing like multi-day dates and his parents were just chill with it. They're like, yeah, you know what? He's out there fucking. <laughs> fucking let him. I, I just let him. Why, Jesus Christ. It was a hell of a thing. Um. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. I, he, um, I've, I think I've mentioned this before. Basically, okay, so he was, um, he was a traveling s s uh, ski bum. Um. <laughs> nice, nice, Marcus. Um, he was a traveling ski bum. That's what he did. He was just, he, he decided he wanted to ski. That's what he did with his life. Uh, for many, many years, for many years. Um, and he was in Jackson Hole and he met uh, a girl who he really, really, really liked. And he went home with her over the holidays and she was going to, she was Harvard Law and her family pulled her aside and basically said, you break it off with him. He has no future. He's a ski bum. That's it. So she broke up with him. Straight up. She followed the, the dictates of her family. And she ended it with him. And he was 
affected. This 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 did this did a number on him. Um, he went back to school and became an investment banker. International finance and investment banking. Married um, married the well-to-do daughter of a, per, a fairly famous Parisian physician. Um, and she speaks like six or nine languages, like seven, eight, nine languages. She's a uh, she's an interpreter for a major corporation. Um, and he he um, he had two children with her and they live in Switzerland, of all places. Yep. He he basically became the man. Like a hundred percent. Oh. No, his knees are shot. Um. So. Yeah, it's the story of my cousin. His sister fucking had a far less interesting arc. Uh, his sister just got knocked up multiple times. His sister had like some sort of like nervous breakdown somewhere along the way, we're pretty sure. And just undiagnosed, untreated. Um, someone, thank you for the follow. Um, and she, she started like just all of the destructive behavior, right? So, yeah, she ended up with a couple of different kids by a couple of different baby daddy and fucking gained like 250 pounds of fucking stress weight and just did a number on herself. Uh, by the way, I'm loving her her like second second half arc though. Um, credit where credits due. She's 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 potentially doing the um, second half lesbian arc, which I adore. I I adore. I will truly tell you, this is one of my favorite things for uh, for women is the second half lesbian arc. That like they just get they're like you know what. I have a fluid enough of a sexuality. I'm just going to opt out of men. The, the fucking men have been the bane of my existence. Fuck them. I'm getting a girlfriend. Right? She's doing that. Yeah. She's doing that option. She's... I, I, I love it. I absolutely adore it. Yeah. She's like, you know, fuck men. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a girlfriend. <laughs> like... I respect it. I, I always love that option. Oh. Um. Yeah, I'm not getting into that. <coughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. So, but one of her daughters actually is sort of got the same. Oh God, one of her daughters is fucked. She's fucked. One of them is just on the fast track. She's going to become a veterinarian, which if anybody knows how difficult it is to get into vet school, holy shit, man. Right? She's going to be a veterinarian. She's got her shit together. She's fucking like she's she's focused and it's just a hell of a fucking I, I, like I want to use some like old time. She's a hell of a spitfire. You know, she's a, she's a she's a fucking feisty one. Like I, I don't want to be seem condescending, but holy shit, does that girl have her shit together? Right? Like, <laughs> she is focused. She's driven. She has a goal. She wants to help animals and people. Like, it, it's... She's legitimately, like, good. She's a good fucking human. And it's it's mad props to her. She did it mostly herself, by the way. I'm not kidding you. Um, the younger of the two siblings, um, she never had a chance. She never had a chance. She never had a chance. Um, her father would, uh, Wilhelm, relatives of mine, my cousins and second cousins or something like that. Um, her father, when he had custody of her for like half of the time, I'm not kidding you, as like a small baby and like early toddler, cousins once removed. Thank you, Resolution. I never do that kind of shit. Um, would sit her in front of the TV all day and just feed her hot dogs. And I'm not talking about like a hot dog and a bun with some relish 
and some mustard and some ketchup. I'm talking about literally just cold hot dogs out of a fucking pack. I'm and this went on for year and a half, two years, right? Develop during developmental cycles, right? Where she needed nutrition to create formative entities in her body and brain. Like she was fucked from the word go. She's got developmental issues. She's got learning disabilities. She's got like lifetime of weight issues. She's got like self esteem. She, she got, she got the package of issues. Yeah. She, she never stood a fucking chance. And her dad's a piece of shit. I mean, as evidenced by, but her dad's like on top of that, dad's a piece of shit. So, yeah. Describing half the people I grew up with is Chris. Chris. Jesus. Um, yeah. So. Cassidy, cheap and easy. Cheap and easy. Um, yeah, so had a lady friend, uh, elite stuff. She was pushed to surgery in neurology. She qualified as a dentist, but she was an alcoholic by then. Didn't uh, give her a doctorate later. She's diagnosed schizophrenic. Jesus. Crick said, you know, us pores. Oh, agua. Oh, I must be dehydrated. I'm thirsty. Like I'm actually thirsty, thirsty. Um. Oh. Mattress, the new mattress, 145 pounds of latex. The new mattress comes Friday. 140 fucking 145 pounds of fucking latex arrives Friday. And then several hundred pounds of home gym arrives Saturday. So that's my weekend. Uh, can still get an eight pack for 99 cents. My dad used to get them and cut them up and mix them with uh, eggs and potatoes. Um, Buddhist bodged, de, bodged, bodged, bodged a, a dullet. Um, bodged a dullet last night talking to a potential date. Turns out she's going into law enforcement. Noped out of there and we blocked each other. Buddhist, it's for the best. You don't need to come home to an abusive household. Diggeth, it happens. It happens. A dead guy's worth of latex. <laughs> uh, Caboose, uh, have fun with that. If I lived in Vegas, I'd offer to help move it in. Um, yeah, oh yeah. Anybody who's a criminal justice major, always red flag, Buddhist. Um, but uh, thank you, Caboose. Um, if you lived in Vegas, Caboose, I'd have your ass over here working out with me. <laughs> you'd be in that, you'd be in the fucking garage with me. Um, but it's a bit of a drive for a workout. <laughs> uh, oh. Taking the next few days off, basically, I think. Um, I may do some cardio, like tomorrow and the next day or something like that. Four hours, according to Google Maps. Yeah, a bit long for a workout. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let my body fucking recover this week and that way I can really go after it. I'm just imagining two anarcho meatheads just working out in the garage. I mean, that's what I'm... I, a resolution, like legitimately, that's what it, I'm becoming. Um is like it's going in my garage right like there's during the summer months i'm gonna have the fucking um garage door up and i'm gonna be fucking in there <laughs> fucking just in there right here you go cassidy
Hmm. Nice caboose. I was going to go with my Californian company, but um, these the, the two guys for Sleep on Latex have a good pitch. I liked what they had to say. A pair of brothers. It's organically grown latex. Better. It's natural latex. Like, it's actual, like, tree sap latex. Organically grown. So it's not a petrochemical derived latex. Which means it's a natural uh, fire retardant. Um, so you don't need to have any chemicals or VOCs or formaldehyde anywhere in the construction. You don't need, like, all of the shit that you need to, like, stop something from burning because it's organic cotton, it's organic wool, and it's organic latex. It self-extinguishes. It just stops burning. Like, you don't need to, like, spray it with anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, huge fucking bonus. And... Everything gets uh, handmade in Chicago. In Niles, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. But everything's made here. No, Bedouin. No, no, no. Not at all. And. Yeah. Right? Like, here's. Here's the team. Right? Like. It's a small company. I, I, you know, it's a small company. Fucking U.S. made. Yeah, it is. Um, they're actually, they're really fucking cool. Um, Cassidy. They, they don't heat up easily. Yeah. Um, so there you go, Cassie. That's what, uh, that's the mattress. And I think I have like a, a fucking, yeah. Hey, mister. Yeah, we go. Yeah, back it up. Uh, any idea how long such a thing would last without deforming? My damn mattresses keep doing that because they have weird pressure point issues. Um, a long time. Um, generally speaking, most latex mattresses carry either a 10 to 25 year warranty on them, depending on the manufacturer. Um, the one in California who made my custom pad that I, I use on the floor, um, they carry 25 years deformation. Uh, the mattress I just got carries a 10-year. They're a smaller company. I understand why they're, you know, only warranting out to 10 years. Um, but generally speaking, natural latex lasts longer. And also, it doesn't break up the same way that all of the other materials break up. It doesn't start powderizing and flaking out like that. It's fucking... Um, yeah. It, it's legitimately... Um, also, it's got a maximum compression on it. Um... It, it won't actually, like, do the weird sink-in thing that memory foam does. It immediately achieves its support uh, support position. It's a really interesting thing, like, to sleep on natural latex. Um, I, I have never looked back. Um, I recommended it to Caboose. Caboose got a topper um, that's natural latex, and he hasn't looked back either. Um... It was a revelation. I, I bought, I originally got a custom latex pad for the floor um, for like tripping and hanging out, right? Like chill areas. Um, and I was looking for it because um, I wanted something no VOC, no flame retardant no harsh chemicals. I was like, where, what, who, how, what exists? And I found out about natural latex and I was like, oh. And so I got, I got a custom pad and cut and made and wrapped and everything. And it is 
legitimately the most comfortable thing I've ever slept on. I, it, it is. It's supportive. It's cool. It's healthful. It's a renewable resource. Um, and if you do it correctly, like Sleep on Latex does and my California supplier both do, they, um, they have small farm distributors. Like Sleep on Latex sources from... Um, a, uh, uh, like uh, artisanal producers in Sri Lanka. I'm not kidding you. So like y they're paying American wages to Sri Lankan latex farmers. That's community transforming. Okay. That's, that's the sort of shit like that kind of currency tra uh, transfer. That's, that's huge. And so, yeah, like there it's small batch, artisanal producers like it's it's a thing um and you know the the wool comes from new zealand which is i mean some of the highest quality wool you can get in the world now and or a u.s grown cotton so and then all built here there's only three ingredients in the goddamn mattress there's only three things that go into it um monsieur monsieur it's the same cost as a mattress it's, it's the same cost as a mattress. I'm not kidding you. The same kind of sh prices that people pay for fucking bullshit mattresses, the same pay price that I paid for my mattress. Most things are, Mancho. Mancho? Um, I get that. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's a few things you don't cheap out on. Right? Save, pinch your pennies, scrape by, save the money, shoes, mattresses, shit like that. Right? Safety gear. Um, there are some things you just... Don't cheap out on. Like, I know there's times in your life where you have to. But if you're at a position where you can save incrementally, yeah, like there's some things you just spend the money on. It's worth it. So, sleep, f foot, and bathroom. You know, I'm, I'm sleep, f foot, bathroom, and food, Marcus. Because your feet, yeah. Shoes, wither, good shoes. When you're, when you're 19, now nah, I'm good. <laughs> um, when you're 19, shoes, you can throw anything on your feet. Trust me, when you're 30, a good pair of shoes and good insoles are a world of difference. Yeah. 100%. On the Sam Vimes boot theory of economic inequality, durability is vital. It is. Um, if you buy um, if you buy cheap shoes, you pay more. If you buy cheap things, you you pay more. In the long run. Yeah, good on you, Bitwin. It, it, it's it's worth trying. Um, I'm not going back. Not in my lifetime. Yep. Being poor is terribly expensive. Um, wife has a latex allergy. Yeah, you fucking stay away from that then. Um, but I would pay for PPE, work clothes, resolable boots, and 1500 max for a bed. We spent our Trump, Trump bucks on a new bed because mattress was getting old. Yeah. Oh, no, those gel, those Dr. Souls gel insoles are fucking dog shit. Um, I had a, I had a podiatrist and a running expert, um, literally, um, 
doctor out of San Diego um, that specialize. Uh, he he sees the U.S. running Olympic runners. Um, he's got like zero gravity fucking treadmills for training and shit in his facility. It's great. Um, I saw him for um, my Morton's neuroma ages ago, and he taught me how to make custom insoles. That's a fucking skill set that you pick up along the way. Um, it's not as advanced as you think it is, right? Like you can like, buy insoles and you can buy certain types of material. You can cut them out and customize and place it on. And oh yeah, like he, he, he taught me that technique. I was like, that's super useful. Um, so are you going to do it, Rev? Bespoke shoes, bespoke boots are like, dude, those boots will last you a lifetime. You can just take them to a cobbler and get them resold and fucking, yeah. Bespoke boots will last you forever. Get some insoles from a reputable sporting goods store. Go to REI. Go to REI. Um... Rev, just, just, just do it. <laughs> um, yeah, like you need those boots, Rev. You need those boots. Get them. Um, uh, super fucking dude. It's so expensive being poor. It's so expensive. Oh, those fucking. What is those? Um, what's the rent to own places? There's, there's a name for that fucking place. Like, there's the, the brand name version of those rent-to-own places. Um, Rent-a-center. Thank you, Dankness. Um, yeah, fucking rent-a-center. Jesus Christ, that shit is a scam and a half. Um, bullshit LLC. <laughs> Marcus. Yeah, it's like a fucking, it's like pawn shops, uh, rent-a-centers, and payday fucking loan places. Can we just get rid of all this shit? Uh. <clears throat> nice. Nice caboose. The only reason I say REI is because it's a worker co-op. It's actually a cooperative. So, it's actually, you know what? It's a customer co-op too. It's a, just a cooperative, I think, in general. Um, we have a fair amount of credit unions, yeah. Yeah, Rev, I don't. Homie don't do installments. Um, let's see. Um, oh, Nicolas Cage is starring as Dracula, just FYI. There's a universal Dracula movie in the works, and Nicolas Cage is going to play Dracula. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Fuck it. <laughs> a Nick Cage Dracula is something I need in my life. I still want, um, I still want the Nick Cage Superman movie. Like, I don't give a sh I don't even give a shit about fucking super, like, superhero movies, but I am a Nick Cage fan. Um, I want, I still want the Nick Cage Superman movie. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I'm fucking here for it. It's gonna be a great. I, 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 dude, I love Nick Cage. He's a great fucking actor. He's insane. See, see, monsieur, monsieur, I, 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 I truly believe. I don't think he would, which would be amazing, right? Like Superman who isn't ripped. Just, just 
fucking regular old Nick Cage as Superman, right? Like he's he's he would put nothing into it. He'd put all of the acting into it. He would act his his fucking tits off, but he would like put none of the physical work in, and that would be amazing. Like Superman, like on a on a fucking bender, basically. Yeah, I love everything Nick Cage does. I think he's criminally underrated. I think he gets made fun of a lot because he enjoys being in movies. Right? Like, this is a dude who fucking I, I I'm hundred percent. I'm on I'm on team Nick Cage. Like, this guy's batshit insane, but he loves being in movies, and you know what? He's good. He's good. He brings something to it. Hey redacted. Uh Zippy, yeah, World of War is fucking dude, World of War is great for a lot of them the <laughs> man of mild steel uh for a lot of reasons he's an actor do even he's great yeah no i i think i think he's fucking he's the right kind of crazy uh bad lieutenant been one are you thinking bad lieutenant sourcing wasn't that last year I'm pretty sure that was last year. Was it last year? Was it this year? Oh my God. Is it sourcing? I have no idea anymore. Um, but I have, we, we watched Willie's Wonderland. Uh, we, wa uh, we watched Willie's Wonderland on bad movie night and <coughs> I source it. Fuck if I know, um, Well, it was, wasn't it? I remember the Just Try Acting Darling. Um, yeah, it's Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. I'm pretty sure you're thinking of. Maybe not. Uh, wait, what was it? Um, hang on. Starring... No, Judge Reinhold. Zandali? Are you thinking Zandali? Yeah, okay, so it's Sandalee then, probably. Um, nice, Zippy. Yeah, old... Yeah, it's probably Sandalee then. Um, yeah, Judge Reinhold wasn't in Bad Lieutenant, so... Yeah. Um, dude, I like, I like everything that Cage is in. He's fucking, he's great. He's great. Um, anybody ever seen his reading of, was it Telltale Heart? Yeah, it was Telltale Heart. Um, dang this, thanks for the follow. <clears throat> Oh, Jesus, Rev. That's a fucking crime against humanity. All things in the heaven and in the earth. Um. Hello, I'm Nicholas Cage, and I'm thrilled to say that I made it to Caged. This is the fourth uh, incarnation of Caged. And I wanted to do something special, my way of saying thank you, so I did a cold reading of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's Telltale Heart, which influenced my work, because I used to read it when I was a child, and it uh, gave me all kinds of nightmares. And I think I was trying to make movies on some level to get to that feeling in some of the more manic performances. Nervous, 
very, very dreadfully nervous I had been in M. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all else was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object, there was none. Passion, there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. Yeah, Degeth, he did the raven. Yes, it was this. He had the eye of a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it. And whenever it <laughs> fell upon me, Corey. my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now this is the point. You fancy me mad. Mad men know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded, with what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, about midnight, I turned the latch of his door and opened it, oh so gently. And then when I had made an opening sufficient for my head, I put in a dark lantern, all closed, closed, that no light shone out. And then I thrust in my head. Oh, you would have laughed to see how cunningly I thrust it in. I moved it slowly, very, very slowly, so that I might not disturb the old man's sleep. It took me an hour to place my whole head within the opening so far that I could see him as he lay upon his bed. Ha! Would a madman have been so wise as this? And then when my head was well in the room, I undid the lantern cautiously, oh so cautiously, cautiously that the hinges creaked. I, I, I 100% believe that should be a thing, Degith. I think there should be an, a Nick Cage setting for all audio. Right for Siri, for Alexa, for fucking audiobooks. Like we should put like actual like processor cycles at trying to simulate machine language. Simulate fucking. Let's get some neural nets and process this shit. We need to be able to simulate an accurate ver rendition of Nick Cage's like inflections and intonations. And there should be a Nick Cage setting on everything. <laughs> We should be able to turn Nick Cage's voice on for just everything. I I agree. And did it just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. And this I did for seven long nights, every night just at midnight. But I found the eye always closed, and, and so it was impossible to do the work. For it was not the old man who vexed me, but his evil... I, and every morning when the day broke, I went boldly into the chamber and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone and inquiring how he has passed the night. So you see, he would have been a very profound old man indeed to suspect that every night just at 12, I looked in upon him while he slept. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. A watch's minute hand moves more quickly than m did mine. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers, of my sagacity. No, I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph to think that there I was, opening the door little by little, and he not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. I fairly chuckled at the idea, and perhaps he heard me, for he moved on the bed suddenly as if startled. Now, you may think that I drew back, but no. His room was as black as pitch with the thick darkness, for the shutters were closed, fastened through fear of robbers. Yeah, and so I knew yeah, you got a wink, Caboose? The opening of the door, and I kept pushing it on steadily, steadily. I had my head in and was about to open the lantern when my thumb slipped upon the tin fastening, and the old man sprang up in bed crying out, Who's there? I kept quite still and said nothing. For a whole hour I did not move a muscle, and in the meantime I did not hear him lie down. He was still sitting up in the bed listening, just as I have done, night after night hearkening to the death watches in the wall. Presently, I heard a slight groan, and I knew it was the groan of mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain or of grief, oh no. It was the low, stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. I knew the sound well. Many a night, just at midnight, when all the world slept, it has welled up from my own bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo the terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt and pitied him. 
Although I chuckled at heart, I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first slight noise when he had turned in his bed. His fears had been ever since growing upon him. He had been trying to fancy them causeless, but could not. He had been saying to himself, Why, it is nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor, or it is merely a cricket which is chimney. a chirp. Yes, he had been trying chim, to chim, chim, himself chim, with chim, his chim, but he had found all in vain, chim, all in vain, because death in approaching him had stalked with his black shadow before him and enveloped the victim. And it was the mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he never saw nor heard, to feel the presence of my head within the room. When I had waited a long time, very patiently, without hearing him lie down, I resolved to open a little, a very, very little crevice in the lantern. So I opened it. You cannot imagine how stealthily, stealthily, until at length in a simple dim ray like the thread of the spider shot from out of the crevice and fell full upon the vulture eye. It was open, wide, wide open. And I could feel Thank you, Caboose. Upon it. I saw it with perfect distinctness. Uh, he's doing a reading of uh, Telltale Heart. Over that chilled the very marrow in my bones. But I could see nothing else of the old man's face or person. You just don't get it, hardware. I'm just going to go with you just don't get it. Spot. And have I not told you? That what you mistake for madness is but over acuteness of the sense. Now I say there came to my ears a low, dull, quick sound, such as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I knew that sound well too. <laughs> nice, Karina. It was the beating in the old man's heart. It increased my fury, as the beating of a drum stimulates the soldier into courage. But even yet, I refrained, kept still. I scarcely breathed. I held the lantern motionless. I tried how steadily I could maintain the ray upon the eye. Meantime, the hellish tattoo of the heart increased. It grew quicker and quicker and louder and louder every instant. The old man's terror must have been extreme. It grew louder, I say, louder every moment. Do you mark me? Well, I have told you that I am nervous. So I am. And now, at the dead hour of the night, amid the dreadful silence of that old house, so strange a noise as this excited me to uncontrollable terror. Yet for some minutes longer, I refrained and stood still. But the beating grew louder, louder. I thought the heart must burst. And now a new anxiety seized me. The sound would be heard by a neighbor. The old man's hour had come. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once, once only. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. I then smiled gaily to find Burger the gets it. so far done. But Burger gets the it. The heart beat on with a muffled sound. This, however, did not vex me. It would not be heard through the wall. At length, it ceased. The old man was dead. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Yes, he was stone, stone dead. I placed my hand upon the heart and held it there many minutes. There was no pulsation. He was stone dead. His eye would trouble me no more. If still you think me mad, you will think so no longer when I describe the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. The night waned, and I worked hastily, but in silence. First of all, I just made it the is, corpse, Rev. It is. The, and the arms and the legs. I then took up three planks from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. I then replaced the board so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye not even his could have detected anything wrong. There was nothing to wash out, no stain of any kind, no blood spot, whatever. I had been too wary for that. A tub had caught all. <laughs> when I had made an end of these labors, it was four o'clock, still dark as midnight. As the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking at the street door. I went down to open it with a light heart, for what had I now to fear? There entered three men who introduced themselves with perfect suavity as officers of the police. A shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicion of foul play had been aroused. Information had been lodged at the police office, and they, the officers, had deputed to search the premises. I smiled, for what had I to fear? I bade the gentlemen welcome. The shriek, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man I mentioned was absent in the country. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search, search well. I led them at length to his chamber. I showed them his treasures, secure, undisturbed in the enthusiasm of my confidence. I brought chairs into the room and desired them here to rest from their fatigues, while I myself, in the wild audacity of my perfect triumph, placed my own seat upon the very spot beneath which reposed the corpse of the victim. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. I was singularly at ease. They sat, and while I answered cheerily, they chatted about the other things. But I respect long, that. I felt myself getting pale and wished them gone. My head ached, and I, I fancied a ringing in my ears. But still they sat and still chatted. The ringing became more distinct. It, it continued and, and became more and more distinct, and I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling. But it continued and gained definiteness until at length I found that the noise was not within my ears. 
No doubt I now grew very pale, but I talked more fluently and with a heightened voice, yet the sound increased, and what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound, a, much such a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton, and I gasped for breath, and, and yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly, more vehemently, but the noise steadily increased. I arose and argued about trifles in a high key and with violent gesticulations, but the, the noise steadily increased. Now, why would they not be gone? I paced the floor to and fro with heavy strides as if excited to fury. But, but the noise steadily increased, and oh God, what could I do? I, I foamed, I raved, I swore, I swung the chair upon which I had been sitting, and grated it upon the boards, but the noise arose over all and continually increased. It grew louder, 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 and still the men chatted pleasantly and smiled. Was it, was it possible they heard not? Oh my God, no. No, they heard. They suspected. They knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. This I thought and this I think. But anything was better than this agony. Anything was more tolerable than this derision. I could bear those hypocritical smiles no longer. I felt that I must scream or die, and now again, hark! Louder, 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 louder! Villains! I shrieked! Dissemble no more! I admit the deed! Tear up the planks! Here, here! It is the beating of this hideous heart! It's a good time. It's a good time. Um, all right. Caboose. Caboose, I don't get it. <laughs> Fucking A, Caboose. <laughs> of all people. In his classic rock song, Another Brick in the Wall, Pink Floyd saying the words, we don't need no education. But that crazy Muppet was wrong. We do need no education, and that's why I'm here today. Well, why did that not kick off? It even says it was redeemed by you. Hmm. Oh, it's not connected to Twitch properly. All right, well, um... I can do that manually. Give me a sec. There you go. Holes have many uses. They prevent our gold ceilings from crashing down on our heads. They form an essential part of our prison system. And they provide a place to hang all of our taste for artwork. But throughout history, the main use for walls has been to keep out the bad hombres. Like this one that almost kept the Germans out of Germany. Or this one that almost kept the zombies out of Israel. Or this one that almost kept the Russians out of the 2016 election. So what better use of taxpayer money could there possibly be than building a 2,000-mile monument to racism? Walls. Complete protection against anyone who's never heard of a letter. Fair enough. Ah. Uh. Complete protection against anyone who's never heard of a ladder. Um, all right, how to clone your streamer. Interesting. Um, where's the window I want? There's the window I want. Or airplanes. <laughs> um... Let me look at something. See if I if I feel up to this task. Let's 
chapter one, that's chapter two, that's chapter three. Where's, where, no, that's chapter three. Where's chapter two? Yeah, where the fuck does chapter two begin on this? Oh, right there. thinking about doing some theory I have not Burger Man I haven't watched South Park in a while though so yeah, yeah, yeah. just get to the thing where you do the thing Nice. And he's up. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here you go. Night, better win. Take care of yourself. Sleep well, my man. It's super easy to get around. Or get over that wall. It's super fucking easy. I've seen... Um... Catch you later, Caboose. Good luck, Karina. I've seen like an eight-year-old um, girl... No, it's too long, Zippy. I mean, it's like six pages long. No, no, you don't. I've seen like uh, I've seen an eight-year-old uh, girl who's a climber, literally do a speed run of this wall. It's nothing to get over it. You just you basically just hop the fucking wall. Um, super easy to get around. A professional climber makes short work of it. Like like I said, I've seen I've seen speed runs of this wall. It takes seconds to climb it. It literally takes seconds for an experienced climber. It takes an inexperienced climber, you know, thirty seconds to a minute. It doesn't take long to get over that wall. You don't even need the ladder. That's the hilarious part, because of the, the the spacing on it, you literally don't need to, uh, you don't even need a ladder. You can just you can just free solo it. Um. Holy shit! What? All right, somebody is. Um, Rev, I have heard that as well about it, that, um, one of the benefits, one of the difficulties of getting across the border wall isn't the wall itself is getting f away from the wall and all of the construction teams built roads back into it. And so the, one of the most difficult aspects um, the construction teams actually took care of. You can get over the wall like that. Um, but a road from the wall to pop population centers was a difficulty. Um, 
And then we went and built those roads for them. see I don't feel it um hey puka Take two, um, fucking take two games. It's been on a fucking lawsuit uh, tear. Apparently, um, they're doing all sorts of trademark disputes. They've claimed they own the words "Rockstar." They've claimed they own the words "Take Two." They claim they were they own the wor word bear, uh, "Bully," and all variants the uh, thereof. Um, apparently, Hazelight Games that it, it takes two. Um, shit, like they play this like dual, like two player games. Um, Take Two Games is going after them for saying it takes two. Um, capitalism at work, folks. Mexican dudes are fucking pro. I can't get my tall ass up fast. So they'll be, uh, be 20 years my senior. Yeah. <coughs> Echuolata. Exactly. Who says the state doesn't help people? Fucking neoliberalism with the win on that one. Uh, the the energy drink has already won their uh, won that argument before. They went after the energy drink before, um, and the energy drink has already won. They they compete in an entirely different sector. You can you can trademark in an operating area. So basically you can trademark for like, we make video games and you know, so like take to a uh, rock star can trademark in video games, but you can have a, a subsequent rock star in, I hate life. in video games. I, I'm sorry, in like soft drinks and that's perfectly allowed under that system. So yeah, rock stars already fucking won that case. They did try them though. Yeah, burger. Well, unless you you got to be profiting from it. Oh, fuck me. Um There was a post on um There's a post on anti-work. Super, super satisfying. Um, super proud, actually, too. Um, good, a good parent, like for once, right? <clears throat> Post on anti work titled, My son just quit his $45,000 a year job without any prospects and asked if he could move home. I was shocked. Needless to say, he was so excited when he got the job right out of college and my wife and I rejoiced with him. Over the course of the next couple of years, however, I saw the joy, not just about the job, but about life in general drain away. Over Thanksgiving, he talked about insane deadlines, a boss who micromanaged, and a business owner who ruled with an iron fist. I encouraged him, but could tell he wasn't the happy-go-lucky son I once had. So this past weekend, when he told us over the phone, he lives in a neighboring state, he walked off the job after a heated argument with his boss. He started sobbing and apologizing. I said, son, you have nothing to apologize for. No job is worth what I see this job is doing to you. His shame was compounded by being married for only a couple of years and having a two-year-old daughter. He then asked if, he could st if they could stay with us for a couple of months while he figures things out. I told him, don't worry. We've got a big house and everyone is welcome. More apologies. Promises he'd get a job as soon as he could. My wife and I told him not to worry about it. In fact, we said a condition in, of him returning was that he was not to find work until he's taken care of himself. He struggles with depression anyway, so I said that he should probably see a, uh, a psych or a therapist, get the help he needs to recover his mental well-being, and go from there. No timelines, no promises. He was beyond grateful, and no parent should want to see their child struggle because of their job. 
This is a shout out to all parents of children, regardless of age. We can be a part of the anti-work labor movement. We can be a safe haven from abusive work relationships. We can trust our kids to make the right choices and encourage them to do whatever they think they need to to have a fulfilling, happy life. The only thing any good parent ever wants from their child is that they have the best of all life has to offer. Like, holy shit, man. Yep, later, Karina. <clears throat> Came across that and I was like, wow. Somebody, like, m like got a PhD in parenting, right? Like, somebody actually, like, respect, mad respect. Uh, bur burger, it's, it's a foreign concept to us. It's a foreign concept to us entirely. Um, so. You know, I want to check something actually. The way that you word this. Ha. Um this was this is what I was wondering. Um Diggeth, she needs to teach. He he needs to teach. I was wondering about the the, the gender and role uh, uh, assumption there. And because you naturally assume that would be a mother, right? Father. Um, as a 60 plus year old grandfather who's lived here most of uh, most of his life. Um, yep. I was wondering about that. It is Rev. I mean, this goes back to, um, you know, the, my f fucking spiel about the Corsini Encyclopedia of Psychology, Volume 2, page 811. And that's where you find the meta analyses on uh, communalism versus individualism and um, the circles and rates of empathy or empathetic response within a society. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't respond to people who just start yelling at me that I look like a guy who was a dick, bruh. Like, if you want to have a conversation, by all means, have a conversation. But, like, I'm ignoring you until you say something productive. Um, yeah, like, it, we live in a hyper-individualistic uh, individualistic society, and that drives down empathetic response rates in the populace. So, it's not surprising that it's more common. It's, I mean, there's other areas that, it, there's other areas of the globe that definitely compete with us in that regard. Um, but. Oh, uh, yeah, Zippe. Dude, are they ever not together? Um, uh, not the co-host. Fucking, um. The other one. Every time I see a fucking one of you people post a fucking screen grab of him on a panel, it's always him and his his bruh. Right? I'm like, do they ever like are they not capable of like completing an argument without the other one having to hold his hand? Or do they just need somebody in the fucking like cheerleading squad? Yeah. Right. Like he needs his hype man. <laughs> a lot of, um,
you check someone to Stanhope. I still love it. I, I, I adore if I, if I can channel any amount of Stanhope for, uh, for you, Corey. Good. Good. I love him. I saw that meme, Zippy. I saw it on the server. Um, do you think it's right for parents to expect their children to take care of them in old age? It depends. How'd you treat your kid? Um... There's a, there's a lot of factors involved in that. Yeah. Um, especially given the societal grind that we experience now. Yeah. But if you were a shit parent, why should, why should anyone expect you to take, be taken care of by your child? Right. Never forget. They picked the nursing home. All right. Like your kid's going to have the final say. So if you're a shit parent and you fucking threw him into the meat grinder of the capitalist workplace at like 14 or 15 and you demanded that they prioritize work and then they, they like, you need to have fucking two jobs like I did when I was in school and shit like that. And you toss them out of the house at 18. Soon as you're, as soon as you're 18, you're out of here. You're going to live on your own. You got to fucking wake up to this real world. If you do that sort of shit. And then you turn like 65 and you're like, why aren't they taking care of me? Why don't they call me? Why don't they ever visit? It's like, yeah, why would they? You're a shit human being. Forget parent. You're just a shit human. I'd help my parents, but they're conservatives. I wouldn't want to turn them into commies. It is true, Rev. My mom has a new family. Her new kids can take care of her. Yeah. Zippy, that's the thing. My mom thinks she was an excellent parent, but she wasn't. That sounds narcissist. That sounds like narcissist. Territory. Um, let's see. lovely yep fucking fourth kid fourth person died from that school shooting 15 year old hmm. um <laughs> buddhist uh Crimson, you're good people, Crimson. You're good people. Excel, I mean, maybe. I don't pay much attention to the fucking shooters themselves. It's always the same fucking... It's always the same profile. It's always the same profile. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Zippy, fuck that shit. Oh, yes. This is because I've been following these fucking programs for for years now.
Is the F uh, the F thirty five program will cost one point five trillion dollars? Is it worth it? The U S Air Force just admitted the F thirty five stealth fighter has failed. And then, of course, yeah, commentary up here. Where are we going to get the money? How are we going to pay for that? We always got bombs and bullets money. We always got bombs and bullets money. Yeah, and sourcing, that's that's super obnoxious. Like, I'd be fucking pissed, too. It's like... um. It's like the families that fucking teach their kids that, like, yeah, this president didn't come from Santa Claus. This came from me, right? Like, don't don't be believing it, believing in some like mystical fucking magical fat white man from from the North Pole. Don't be asking for like shit I can't deliver, right? This is this is from us. Yeah. Um. Jesus, Zippy. <laughs> Mom, I want healthcare. We have healthcare at home. At home. Brat. Um. Yeah, we just passed a massive tax cut up to the rich. How could we pay for Medicare for all? I'm sorry, what? New Mexico police officer accused of raping woman he arrested in D for DWI. Um. It's Leta Puebla, New Mexico. 22. He's 22. He raped a drunk driving suspect while taking her to jail. I'll st I'll speak to the judge if you spend longer and if you spend a longer amount of time together with me. You spend a shorter amount of time in jail and you get to see the uh, judge quicker. He pulled the car into a dark down a dark road and took off his vest and his belt and Um, he admitted to, uh, having sex with her. He, he tried to, uh, yes, I had sex with the woman while she was under arrest, but she initiated the encounter and I merely had a, wait for it, lapse in judgment. Yeah. Oh. Nice, Crimson. Yeah. It's way to go on that. Um, no disagreement. Who's uh, ACAB? <laughs> Who's ACAB crab is that? Um, oh, it's bread crochets. All right. Um, uh, hey, it's bread crochets selves. Hey, bread. Um, yeah, cop being a cop. Oh, fucking. Yeah, I gotta work. I gotta work on shoulder impingement. Yeah, I gotta work on shoulder impingement exercises. Um. Oh, you are zippy. Oh, lovely. New Mexico is one of those states where if they're in handcuffs, it's not uh, handcuffs. It's not automatically rape. Lovely. Lovely. Um, so apparently Cyber Monday sales fell for the first time ever. Um, 
not by a huge amount. I'd w I would have liked to have seen bigger numbers, but 1.4%, 10.7 billion. That 1.4% equals $10.7 billion. Um, but... Uh, yeah, thank you, Corey. Um, I do. They're coming along. I still want to, I still want to, like, I want to double them. I kind of, yeah, that's the goal for next year is to add a minimum of 15 pounds more of muscle. But I'm shooting for, like, 25 or 30 if I can hit it. Um, this headline is just fucking, I, I can't, I can't even with this fucking headline. <laughs> Years apart, Mississippi mother and son both die in police restraints. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah, it's coming along, Corey. I mean, it's 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 tough haul, and I'm I'm in rough shape, right? It's always falling apart. Uh, yeah, uh, buck forty to buck forty two, something in there. I've put on twenty pounds of muscle so far this year. Yeah, I started a buck twenty. Um, keep in mind, I graduated high school at 110 pounds. I'm stick thin. I'm fucking stick thin. I'm I'm just a teeny tiniest little twink. Um, so I've never I've always been I've always done stuff that didn't require muscle mass, right? It required like strength, but balanced with weight, like rock climbing and skydiving and shit like that, right? Um, so. No, no, by all means, Corey, I don't mind. Um, but I started this year, I started this project in April of this year. I am. Uh, I'm working towards Twonk, though. I'm working towards Twonk. Um, I started this project in April. Um, so in 10 months, I managed to put on about 20 pounds of muscle, which I will... Gladly take. Oh, God. Yeah, that fucking shoulder. I, like, I literally caught it. I could feel the impingement when I fucking lifted like that. Um, yeah, no, that's... It, RZ, it's, it's just not true. Like, the traps are up higher. The biceps are literally t over two inches uh, gained. Like, almost two and a half on one of them. Um, oh, sourcing. No, it's 100% with, with testosterone. I'm just not doing cycles, um, but I am testosterone supplemented. Um, yeah, um, but I'm not like roid levels, right? Like I'm not doing cycles. I'm just su supplement. Oh yeah, fucking a! I can feel that fucking catching. <sighs> Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't do impingement exercises specifically. Um, but no, the, the like the pec muscle is like there's something I can grab and move around. 
Um, there's, I gained a couple inches on the biceps. The legs are getting cut. Um, the, the abs are starting to get their lines back, right? Like I'm not going to do a cut diet for my fucking abs. Oh my God. A cut diet sucks so much. Oh God. Um, sourcing, I I've said like straight up, like if I can get to a place where like I can truly like start busting out, um, proper reps without like shoulder like if i can get everything rehabbed back to like a good starting position i'll do a cycle or two i don't mind yeah no peaky no um yeah yeah Corey, and all my doctors are happy that I've put on weight, like all of my medical professionals are on board with it. Um, recommendations across the board from multiple longtime doctors that like, yeah, no, the testosterone is, he should, he should have it. Like this is like, he's, he's always been underweight. He's always been a hard gainer with simple application of testosterone. We've seen, you know, his weight increase to a healthy level. He's gaining muscle. Like, yeah. 100%. So I've got like all of my medical personnel, all of my medical staff is backing me up on exogenous testosterone as well. And so, um, yeah, it does rev. Um, but yeah, Peaky, no club membership though. I've had plenty of like personal trainers and shit like that. Yeah. So I got plenty of experience in this sort of area. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's a good way to jump levels. I was at 190 pounds lean at that time. My lean weight without muscle build is buck 45. Nice. Um, I'd love to... I'd love to get to like 180 pounds of muscle. That'd be hot. I mean, for somebody who graduated high school at 110 pounds and up until earlier this year was 120, right? Like I've spent my entire life stick thin. I've been cut. I've been cut as shit before, right? Like back in the day when I was athletic, dude, I had that gymnast shit, like that swimmer gymnast shit going on. Not an ounce of fat on my body. I was cut as shit. I was ripped. Because there was nothing there but skin and then toned muscle underneath. But, hey, Al, it'd be really nice to have, like, 175, 185 pounds of fucking muscle on my frame. That'd be, that'd be kind of, that'd be, that'd be fun. That's something I haven't done in this life yet. Um, also, I'd like to get to the point where I can climb again. My buddy in high school that did MMA was slim ripped. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fun, but I'd like, dude, I want to, you know what I want? I want these fucking to be filled. I want my shirt sleeves to be, to be literally filled, right? Like I, I want that to just be full. It's what I'm shooting for. buy smaller shirts no um diggeth two of you make smaller shirts diggeth i've already got a climbing gym picked out here in town so if you want to join me sometimes uh sometime like if i get everything rehabbed i gotta get my forearms rehabbed um where that caught, it fucking, it, like, I can literally feel it. Um, I gotta get my forearms rehabbed. I gotta get my shoulders rehabbed. Um, but if I do that, um, diggeth, I got a climbing gym here, like, down eastern, fucking up eastern, picked out, so. And they're super, like, they're super reasonable. So, if you want to join me sometime in the future, maybe halfway through next year or something like that. Um... It does sourcing. 
my um my uh my world revolves around diet now getting enough protein to continually build muscle it's not an easy thing it's not an easy thing um Cool. RZ, it's pounds of meat. I eat meat. I eat better quality meat than you do. <laughs> Guaranteed. Um, I don't even need to, I don't even need to, need to ask you where you source yours. I know mine's better quality. Um, I eat meat. It's still not easy. A 300 square foot apartment in Vegas for two. I have no idea. Um, when's the last time you consumed 250 grams of protein in a day? Yeah, it's not easy. Four, four scoops of like brown rice protein powder in combination with six tablespoons of hemp protein powder uh, will only get you to 80 grams of protein. A pack of bison, ground bison meat will get you to about 86 grams of protein. Yeah, Rev, don't do that now. Um, Weed calories are not easy. Most people get the bulk of their calories from sugar and grains. Yes. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy to make macros. Eating clean, have to eat crusty, have to eat a cow. Basically, basically... Um, yeah, it, it's, if, if somebody says it's easy to, to make macros, they either are lying or they don't know what they're talking about. Because I mean, the fact of the matter is, is like talk to any, uh, any strong man or any bodybuilder about diet stuff. And they'll tell you the truth that a lot of the time you're force feeding. It's difficult to get the, the the amount of macros you need in a day to do that sort of thing. Dude, to build muscle, you need 1.3 to 1.8 times your body weight in grams of protein. All right? So just think about how much you weigh. Multiply that times a starting position of 1.3. 140 pounds times 1.3. It's 182 grams of protein. Right, but if you really are trying for a bulk, then you need 1.8 times 140 pounds be 252. That's a lot of fucking protein. Yeah, it's not easy by any means. For two, you force feed. You force feed. I'm not kidding you. You force feed. You eat. You get up and you move around and you fucking settle it in your stomach and you eat more. And you eat more. My basal metabolic rate is ridiculous. Like my resting metabolic rate is ridiculous. I can, I, this body takes 2,000 calories just to exist. If I laid in bed all day long and didn't move like I was sick. 2,000 calories. Yeah. I have a high fucking metabolism. 
So for me to gain, it takes fucking work. I just shoved everything into a blender, drank sludge constantly, says so Dorsey. Yeah. This is what a lot of dudes end up doing. It's just easier. Like that wild guy from the documentary we watched. Yes. Yes. Under construction. Um, you explaining that made me gain weight, says Puka. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy to do. Not for me. It's easy at my age. It's crusty. Um, yeah, except eating things like foie gras. Like, that's the thing. If you want to eat fucking Burger King and Krispy Kreme all day long, you can... Um, geez, crusty. Uh, you can gain weight, no problem. Try doing it eating clean. Weed, you fucking lightweight. I graduated high school at 110 pounds. You fucking fatty. <laughs> um, of course you're like six foot twelve. Yes, I did that intentionally. <clears throat> I've done, I've done probably every iteration of. I'm 30 feet taller than you. He is. Um legitimately sweet is a tall motherfucker. Um, I've done, I've done paleo. I've done keto. I have done, and I not for small periods of time, years on end. Um, I have done AIP diets, uh, for trying to deal with my, my neuropathy. Um, I have done, yeah, no, I've, I've done a lot. Um, Five foot seventeen inches. <laughs> um, fuck Sweden. <laughs> uh, the warrior diet. Oh God, no, not no. I haven't, but Jesus Christ, just the name of it alone. Oh, it's intermittent fasting. All right. Oh, to improve weight loss. Just what I need. Oh, it's a 20. Okay, it's a 20. Tw uh, it's a 20 hour, four hour. Got it. Another day, another couple hundred calories that haven't been burned by MMA trading. Let's sigh. Um, yeah, we were just talking about it. Yeah, don't drink alcohol. It's terrible for neuropathy. So, no. Beer isn't a solution. Um, oh, cat. Interesting sourcing. Oops. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm just going to hang on to that really quickly. Um, <laughs> he refused my drink offer, guys. He really doesn't. No, I really, I really don't drink. Um, but he smuggled his water in. I did smuggle my water in. They split the security guy explicitly said I was going to have to throw my water away. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Um, uh, put it in the internal, like sort of pocket area of my jacket, zipped the back up of my, uh, zipped the jacket, uh, up a little bit behind my back and just walked right in. 
Like, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> High functioning alcoholic and heavy smoker. It's the 80s diet, minus the cocaine and Shasta. Um, yeah, exactly, Buddhist. Like, fuck off. Because they want you to buy theirs, Zippy. That's all it's about. They just want you to buy theirs. Theirs comes in a fancy aluminum can. Yeah. Comes in an aluminum can. Cream, y'all. Yep. Um, you dude, dig. How much was your fucking uh vodka and like a, a vodka and an energy drink and a, a bottle of water, like maybe that big? Thirty some dollars. How much was the water? Do you, do you know? Do you remember, Dig? How much was just the bottle of water? Vodka Monster and water was 35. Yeah. So. Glass, glass about. That, that around, that high, maybe that much vodka. You know, in the bottom, maybe, probably not even two fingers worth of vodka, um, a monster energy drink and a little like a can of water. Um, Thirty five dollars. Rev, I have a pocket flask. You're the exact type of. Oh. You're the exact type of person I'd expect to have a pocket flask, Rev. <laughs> um. Oh, Corey, our, our city water is dog shit. It's bad. It was heavy pour? Oh, good. That's good, Dig. But, no, it's... It's profit incentive. It's not a matter of whether the water is hard, skeptic. It's a matter of the fact that there's shit in it. I run a literal distillation of, uh, uh, machine for my city water. I clean it out on a regular. Until you have petroleum black chemical byproduct floating on top of your water, just leave it at the door. I got video of fucking all sorts of shit in the city water. And that's after a carbon, multi stage carbon pre filter. Like, homie, don't try. Like, I got receipts on this. This isn't, like, this isn't speculative. This isn't opinion-based. This is, here's video of what our water looks like when you cook it. Um, Diggeth, everything is one system. But yeah, dude, our water here is bad. It's bad. Um, <laughs> fucking Vegas locals don't touch the, f the city water. It's, it's disgusting. Lomo Saltado. Or Cooey. Maybe Cooey. But something, it's probably going to be Peruvian. Uh, Chipolines from, uh, from Oaxaca. Um, but Lomo Saltado. 
just because everybody would enjoy it. Cooey to just have a good time and watch people freak out trying to eat it. Um, nice, Crimson. I love the women in pockets thing. It's an adorable meme. Pockets! It has pockets. That's a great looking skirt. It has pockets, thanks! Love that. Um, Let's see. We talked about that. We talked about that. Ooh, what? What's this? Fair enough. Dude, the struggle was real. <laughs> I got so excited my last skirt didn't know if it had Bacchus. Amazing surprise. Oh, God. I don't, so don't care. Cat, you were right. I should just fucking record a video clip of... Of me saying some of this shit and fucking just, so I don't have to do it. Uh, bitch, there's no hair on my belly. It's lasered smooth. There ain't no hair below my waist either. So I don't know what you think you saw, but you didn't see it. I just got my skirts online. Dig. Yeah, I'm smooth. So, like, as can be. Um, so. Most of it sourcing. Most of it. Um, naval, Brazilian, arms, legs. So, yeah. <laughs> Crusty, nothing like tossing a clean salad. Um... So, yeah. There's still some patches on my legs that are coming along. Sort of see a little bit of hair there, but otherwise, fairly smooth. Oh. So, yeah. Like... Um, I just realized you'd be one really slippery fucking jujitsu and I'm extremely jealous now says cat. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and a safety razor for beard. I actually use an electric razor. 
I I hate fucking shaving. I hate like I hate that shit. Um, I just use an electric razor. I think I'd have a bad reaction to laser removal. My skin is sensitive as fuck. You'd be surprised, Dick. You'd be surprised. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned about the irritation to my face from shaving and also ease of use. It's all stubble right now because I just shaved yesterday, but the whole way. Um, mine, like this, ba basically this is as far as I can grow hair, right? Like about this line here, the little touch right there, but here over and over and then here, nothing like full beardish. It's all, it's all lower jaw. Um, uh, but yeah. Cause this fucking chair. It's cause because of this position. I guarantee goddamn to you. That's what's fucking making that irritated. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna take it easy on it today. Um I don't sleep on my sides, Peaky. Back. Um, the older I get, the darker my body hair is becoming. The rest is clear unless just right in the sunlight. I have a furry aura. Um, darker hair on your complexion will work well for laser dig. The, the translucent, the clear hair it won't affect, won't be affected at all. You'd have to do electrolysis to get rid of that. Um, Yeah, I've done you. Yeah, I'm not a fan, Corey. Um, but I will do like impingement stretches and exercises because that's all I need to do. Oh. Interesting, Crimson. Um, Um, yeah, dig, uh, you, you would have to do electrolysis. Zippy, how did you burn your arm? What did you do? Um, cooking iron, curling iron. What'd you do? Um, uh, but yeah, that's, I, I, I don't like body hair. Not a fan. Um, I don't mind on a dude. Right? Like, I don't mind on a dude. Right? Like, I'll, I'll sit there and, like, play with your chest hair and fucking, I don't, I don't mind. That's, that's total turn on for me to, like, be curled up next to a dude and, like, you know, be playing with his chest hair or something like that. But on me, no. Nah, I don't like body hair. Cooking chicken, pulling it out. Chicken came out good. Oh, there you go. I'm bidding on a Ouija board incident. Where's that? What's that attachment right there? Yeah, because that's that. Ooh, that's weird. Zippy, you shouldn't... You shouldn't have an issue. It, like, why are you... Why, why do you need, like, full sleep protection for pulling something from the oven? <laughs> Don't. I mean, all I use is a hand towel for my heat protection. I just constantly have a hand towel, and you just grab the hand towel and do a quick spin and wrap. And there you go. Yeah, it's literally on the externality. 
Oh, wait. Hmm. Cringe, give me welding gloves. <laughs> Back the fuck off. Um, dude. Anybody who's worked a kitchen knows the towel deal. You just use a towel. You've got your hand towel and that's what you use. Every every line cook, every chef the world over knows just to use their towel. Um Asbestos gloves are nothing. <laughs> uh, just don't use the wet towel. That's it is fair. Although there should be a dry area, so you you wrap the internal the the wet goes on the inside, the dry goes on the outside, and you get it out quick. And then do a towel change if you have to. Um, do I need to get a knife to demonstrate how to hold a, a kitchen knife properly, Corey? Um. Pinch. Pinch. Fair enough, Zippy. Get get around that. There we go. I kind of... When do the tape measuring again? That was fun. Um, why do I have a message? Oh, apparently I got a gift sub. All right. Why? Mm. Yeah. I'm on a roll. Just closing wrong tabs all over the place. Fucking. Oh, we've got, huh, interesting. We've got a new feature. Keep ban evaders out of your channel. Suspicious user detection is now enabled for your channel. Uses machine learning to identify and restrict accounts suspected of evading channel level bans. All right, what is it? It's under moderation, right? Yeah. Wait. Can adjust or okay, well where is it? There it is. Okay. Ban evasion detection. Interesting. So likely evaders automatically um, get uh, all of their um, messages held for mods. Interesting. Yeah. Possible evaders get flagged, but likely evaders get automatically restricted. All right. I'll keep it on and see what it looks like. I've had a long day. 
Um, I'm tired, but I still, yeah, we're leaving. Um, I still have like a bunch of shit to do. Like I said, I still have stretches and exercises and all sorts of shit to, to do. So you may catch me on discord. You may see me in the voice chat on discord. I'll be hanging out. Um, I cat, I don't want to be at the keyboard with the shoulders. I, I don't want to be at the keyboard. Um, <laughs> so probably not. Um, yeah, see is this is fucking with me anyway. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what I can't. Uh, thank you, Brad. Um, wasn't my highest energy stream for sure, but we got it done. Tomorrow's Thursday, late night stream. I got my Dom tomorrow as well. It's a whole, it's gonna be a thing. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can't get these fucking shoulders worked on a little bit today. And other than that, I don't think I'm gonna work out uh, any further today. Um, Peaky, thank you for the biddies. Um, maybe I'll do some bike riding. We'll see. But either way, um, yeah, I'll probably un be on Discord. I just don't feel like streaming anymore. <laughs> So, um, later dig.